The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys, streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand of Elliott, plowing to the goal line, Barry sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it in for the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It is a say it with your chest Thursday here on Talking Cowboys. It is the final show prior to the Christmas holidays, and it is also the pri- final show prior to the Washington football team matchup at AT&T Stadium on Sunday. Welcome in to Talking Cowboys, presented by Tostitos, helping fans get in on the game and our favorite chip and our favorite dip. Of talking cowboys. Ah. Welcome in, everybody. Ooh, you threw oh. it up there. Oh, he I was didn't. throwing it to, to Isaiah. Uh, he didn't catch it though. Oh, <laughs> he just hit the floor. <laughs> he just wasted a Tostitos chip. Tell you, man, you gotta can't waste those carbs. That is not okay. You gotta have them. They're precious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah. Rob, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some, I've got some red velvet donuts in here for you guys later. Ooh. So there's some carbs. Oh, oh a ribbon. Oh. Mm-hmm. At least someone went to the donut shop. Uh, <laughs> Chris, sh- <laughs> okay, that's it. Throwing shots. Ah, it's a carryover from five minutes ago. Yeah, no, it? It, it had yeah. It. Good. Had if it. you know, you know. If you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> good job, Chris. I'll show you later. <laughs> yeah, show us later. <laughs> okay, good. Rob Phillips, Heckma Harrison, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Isaiah Stanback is here. Hey. Now, hey, he had to charge his car this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he had to charge his car this morning. <sighs> How's it going, Isaiah? I'm swell. How are you guys doing? Good. It's a spiffy jacket. I like your shirt. Thank you, sir. You look fantastic. Thank you guys I just... almost look like you have TV here in a minute. In a little mm-hmm. bit, right? Okay, yeah. It's kind of what it looks like, huh? Tell us you have TV without telling us you have TV. <laughs> That's exactly right. You Show have TV. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right, guys. How's everybody feeling? A couple Man. days out from week 16. Ah, hate a free. Yeah? Yeah. Good. That's awesome. I mean, that's what happens when you have, like, what, 99.9% chance to win the NFC East? I saw some one of the analysts on Twitter that does his simulations where you simulate the possibilities so many times based off of the probability. Yeah. Mm. He said he simulated it 50,000 times, and there was not one single simulation where the Cowboys did not win the NFC East. That's a lot, right? <laughs> I'm angry with myself. I know we haven't talked about why. Because the the ball of pro and I forgot my guy. The what? Can't believe, I'm angry because I forgot my boy. Wow. Anger. Brian Anger. Yeah, we missed him yesterday. How the heck did I forget Anger? I used to protect him. Did you just call it the bro bowl? The bowl. The ago? bowl pro. The, the bowl, bowl of pro. pro. Oh, okay. The bowl of you. pros. I think okay. you said it was okay. the bro bowl. That needs <laughs> that to be too. a skit. That, that too. <laughs> that needs to be something. <laughs> The That's Pro funny. Bowl. But yes, Rob, we do have some Pro Bowlers that were announced yesterday. We got the number right. We got five right when we Woo. made our predictions yesterday. Zeke did not make it. I thought he had a pretty good shot at it. But Cowboys did get a couple offensive guys. Tyron Smith, Zach Martin. No real surprise there. No real surprise Micah Parsons made it. No real surprise Trayvon Diggs made it. Mm-hmm. And yes, Brian Anger shouldn't have been a surprise there either. We just weren't thinking special teams, I guess. Is he like he's like second in net punting this he's, year? He's been a beast. And I don't know how many times Mike he's McCarthy first is he first? Yeah, I don't know how many times Mike McCarthy has said after a game like, "Man, field position was a big factor in this game." He is us. an absolute yeah. weapon for yeah. our defense, and I'm sure they have gifted him plenty uh, today and tomorrow. He will be getting those. Was it white elephant? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a secret good, yeah. Santa kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all kind of hanging out with Brian Anger. He's got this m- m- mechanical leg because of <laughs> giving him a little bit of rest. Forty-three point nine net average. Jesus. It's the second highest total of his career. The only time he had a better season was back in 2019. He's had 21 punts inside. The 20. Yeah, he's so he's amazing. It's pretty phenomenal when you look at those numbers and how that can affect you in a field position battle, much like how Mike McCarthy said. Mm-hmm. It's a weapon to, to use. And 
I mean, there's been multiple times where you and I have talked about it in the middle yeah. of the studio. We're like, oh, wow, Brian Anger coming Chilling. out again. I mean, he literally changes, the, the obviously, the possession of the field. I mean, he literally flips the side of it. Like He he will take it from your 20 and kick that thing all the way down within their 20. Somehow, some way, that ball just keeps going. It's kind of like a, <laughs> it's kind of like the old Michael Vick commercials. Mm-hmm. You know, he used to throw the ball and the ball just kept going. Yeah. That's, that's what he's doing when he, when he punts the ball. And it's, it's awesome. The defense has to love it. And it changes your play calling. It changes the the risk factor when you start looking at, you know, should we go for it on fourth down or should we not, depending on where you're at on the field. If you feel like you have a, th- uh, a weapon in, at the punter position that can literally pin these guys down inside their own 20, inside their own 10, then why why even take the risk? Take the decision away from Absolutely. you because yeah. you know yeah. what you got in him. Yeah. I don't know if the voting's done by last Sunday, but he had, I mean, that was a hell of a final case. He had four punts, four down inside the 20-yard line against the Giants. Like, that's, Mm. I mean, that's about as good as it gets right there. What did you guys think about Tyron Smith uh, making it just, I mean, obviously that just shows so much of the stigma around Tyron Smith lately has been the injuries, but just how effective and how well-respected he is amongst his peers to get voted in. To the Pro Bowl. I mean, Zach Martin, we already know. I mean, come on, there's no arguing, arguing there. But just, I thought Tyra Smith, I think we talked about it just briefly, but didn't know if he was going to get in. And obviously, unanimous. But even when he's injured and he's playing, if he's on the field, he's dominant. There's just no question mark about it. I think some of, some of the other guys that we referred to yesterday, when they're injured and they're trying to play through it, it's still like, oh, that they're, it's, they're trying, but they're not. They're not them. Yeah, uh, Tyron, when he's on the field, even though you know he's battling through some injuries, he's still dominant as all get out. And I think that's what, when you start looking at the voting, there's no question marks around, around him. I will say it's surprising, and I wonder how many times this has happened, where technically the, technically the Cowboys have the number one offense in the NFL still, despite all the struggles they've had lately. Mm-hmm. And to have two pro bowlers, two, on that side of the ball, that's kind of surprising. But I think, look, they've struggled to their standard the last few weeks. Yeah. And I think it probably does speak to how they do spread the ball around a lot to guys. You know, it's not one guy that mm-hmm. that, that uh, Dak is looking to. Well, and going off of what Isaiah said yesterday, I mean, if you didn't get a chance to hear it, go back and listen. It was on the back end of the Wednesday show. And Isaiah, you mentioned it's a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately mm-hmm. league. And that's why I'm a little surprised that Tyron Smith still found his yeah. way in. I think it's exactly what Heckma said. It speaks to his reputation yeah. and his dominance of what he does when he's available. He was the second-highest-rated pass blocker mm-hmm. in all of football, according to Pro Football Focus, when he was healthy. The only thing is that he's missed four out of the last, what, six games? Five games, something of the sort. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's missed time lately, so it's a bit surprising to see 77 out there. Not saying he didn't earn it because he's been phenomenal when he's out there. However, it was interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, to Heckman's point, he's dominant. When he's when he's when he is present, he's dominant, and that's just a testament to to the hard work that he's puts in. And um, yeah, just who he is. Hey, P, they started to announce alternates as well, and I have not seen that. You hadn't seen it? No, did they? Man, look, I'm not going to jump out the cake because you fact check everything. You know, I heard Randy Gregory was an alternate. So mm. I know the team doesn't announce them. Okay. But if it's a source kind of thing, then cool. You're I, my source, dog. What are you talking about? They, they, don't, they don't really tell us that. I mean, eh, we sometimes we kind of get word, but we never talk about it. But I think he, that's another example. Randy is like he's missed some time when he's been on the field. He has been dominant, Killing you know. It. And if he and I think Kyle, was there something with the fact that he he got put on IR and that affected his Pro Bowl ability to be on the ballot or something? I think that was it was that was an issue because he was on IR. I think he missed two weeks of Pro Bowl voting. Yeah, something of the sort. It yeah. was very odd the way that that rule kind of worked into it, but he was not available for the first two weeks. In order to get that voting, when you watch him play, he looks like a Pro Bowler. Yeah, you know, it's just maybe the whole body work, and and obviously, there's a lot of uh, talented pass rushers in the NFC. Yeah. Micah Parsons being one of them. So let me ask you this: Let's say everyone is healthy in a perfect world on the defensive side of the football <laughs> through the first 14 games of the season. Who gets snubbed out of the Pro Bowl, and who is, of course, a Pro Bowler? Because I think Randy Gregory's name's definitely on that list. Demarcus Lawrence's name. 100% on that list. Who else? Is there anybody else that you could look at and say that's a definite pro bowler? That's on the a tough one. Side? Mm. I don't know. I always say good question when you're trying to buy yourself some time to answer the question. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't. Maybe Neville Gallimore if he plays to the level that you expected him to play, but even that's kind of speculation. It's hard. The guys, the other guys in this league at his position are. 
Yeah. I, yeah. I think I was really shocked at the Jerron Curse not making it. And mm-hmm. I guess because of how effective he is for us. Mm-hmm. And, I th- and I would think that everyone around the league that's playing these big nickel packages could see how effective he is at the linebacker strong safety hybrid. Who, who got in that strong safety for NFC? I'll have to go look at it. Yeah. Buda I, Baker and Harrison oh, Smith. Yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah. Hey, yeah. look at him. Hey, hey, he didn't even turn it. He turned it on. That's just a U dub guy. <laughs> it's hard to supplant guys that have been in it yeah. how many times combined, yeah, exactly. you know? But yeah, I agree with you. Like, He's been as valuable to this defense as anybody. Mm-hmm. Just in terms, first of all, just look at the snaps. He never comes off the field, and he's Tackles. added to their their versatility. Man, he plays a lot of, all over the place. You know, in the box, back, everything, slot sometimes. Yeah, that's the thing about Jaron Curse is I, I think maybe if he had more name recognition prior yeah. to the year, maybe he does get in there. But he has played well enough, I think, to even be in the conversation, which yeah. is a testament to what he's done and, and the way that he's fit into this defense. Anybody you think got snubbed out of the Pro Bowl voting across the league? You, know, you want me to read off some names? Yeah. Read off some names. Okay, how about Joe Burrow, quarterback for Can- or for Cincinnati? No mm-hmm. snub. Austin Eckler, Leonard Fournette. Just stop me when you think he got snubbed. Chris Godwin, Derrick Henry, Yannick what? Ngakwe. What? Wait a minute, what? Yeah, Derrick Henry didn't make Godwin, it. Godwin might be one. You think Godwin and Godwin? Henry? Godwin's third in the league in, in, re- in receiving yards. Mm. Henry's numbers are still Henry's numbers are still there, and he's missed how many games so far? Hasn't I mean, played since week eight because of the broken foot. I guess that's why yeah. they just said, "Well, he had." Now I understand, but, he's, uh, but you know, you're right. The numbers, rushing yards. I know. Well, yeah. she's in the NFL. <laughs> she's that's <laughs> just come on. That, <laughs> bring it out, Rob. That's all. That's why I thought Zeke would make it, and I'm, yeah. I'm not saying Zeke's a snub, but look at the stats. Look at I mean, compared to Kamara, um, yeah, or even Connor. I mean. Look, the running game hasn't been what it's been. He hasn't been healthy, but I, th- I thought he had a pretty good shot at it. Based again, based we talk about guys' resumes, you know, I thought he had a shot at it. Is that maybe a snub because of the the anti bias on Cowboys? Because we've talked about how there's plenty oh, of Cowboys fans out there. They're so subjective. I'm just saying. No, I just think I just think people look at Zeke and say we know what he what he sh- what he is potentially, you know, mm-hmm. and where he's at. And I think that's how people are looking at it. I don't think they're even looking at the stats and, okay, he's still being effective. But I think they're saying, okay, we know what Zeke is and what he's been in the past, and this is the Zeke that we have not now. Him. We can't put him in that category currently. That's no snub against him. It's just saying, Zeke, you're not Zeke right now. You're, you're Z. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm not going there. It, I mean, I feel like it's a snub if you're basing it. I thought that the Pro Bowl was based off of the numbers. What You know, perception also there. And he gets snubbed, and the guys that are, that are above him don't, don't have the yards that he has. I just don't – yeah, I don't think the guys that made it – all I'm saying is I, he hasn't been dominant. Dominant, dominant yeah. running game, but I'm not blown away by the guys that no, made it I agree. this year. I agree. So that's all I'm saying. Look, I didn't, I didn't think that Dak would would make it, but I was surprised that um, quarterback for the Rams didn't make it. I, I mean, over uh, Stafford, Stafford didn't make it over Murray. You know, I thought that was a little different, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on par. I'm on, I'm on the ship with with Godwin. Godwin, Godwin is a complete beast. It sucks that his season's over, yeah. um, but that dude is. Behind Tyreek Hill and Cooper Cup, that's it. He's above Devontae Adams. In your, in the stats, in receiving yards. Oh wow, yeah, he's third. He's third in the NFL. Not even in the NFC. Yeah, NFL. It's a big loss for Tampa. It sucks for them. Big loss for Tampa. Yeah. What was it? A torn ACL or yeah, MCL? A- ACL. 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 That sucks, man. But it's like the it's getting so hard on defenders now. Like there's no there's no good place to hit a guy, and it sucks because this is the. This is the the recourse to 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 not being able to hit guys up high, and I get it. You don't want to hit them in the head because the injuries, the concussions, all that. I, I totally understand that. But you can't even hit guys in the chest anymore without getting penalized and getting your game check taken away. So we're, what's left to hit? You know, guys are going to start shooting at the legs, and this is what happens when you. That's why we're seeing so many so many more ACL injuries in the league because guys are shooting at the legs now because they don't want their checks to be gone. It's kind of this is a good transition because Micah Parsons actually got in with or got into it with Tom Brady Saw that. Yeah. about this exact yep. conversation because Tom Brady said that you can't hit below the knees basically and then Micah Parsons responded with well let's just stop playing tackle football then 
And I mean, that shows the confidence yeah. for Micah Parsons as a rookie to yeah. actually. You don't. You don't want guys to, to get hurt. Obviously, I mean, that's the last thing any player wants. You don't want to injure another guy. Okay, everybody's playing hurt. You don't want to injure somebody, especially in their in their their season. But at the same time, you have a job to do. And if the rules dictate where you can hit somebody, then that's the only place I can legally hit them. And I'm just I'm hopeful that they don't get hurt when I do it. Yeah, the rule the rule changes have allowed Tom Brady in part to play till he's 45 years old. Yeah. Because and I, I think he's the greatest of all time. I'm not saying he's not, but I think like a Joe Montana got Oof, beat down, beat and down Troy. so many Troy it, quarterbacks in the past who I think can be in the conversation just had shorter careers because the rules were what they were and it was kind of open season. Yeah, and they laugh. I mean, they have to be laughing at these new rules and guys getting touched, on, you know, touched on the helmet so and it's soft. a 15-yard penalty. But you're right. I mean, where where do you target if you're a defender? Yeah. You can't go low, you can't go high, but yet and still the, you know, the NFL rules committee isn't changing anything of these things to make it more advantageous for the defense. And so, I mean, I, I talk, when I talk to my son about position, like all the kids, when they go line up, they all want to play Wide receiver, and they mm-hmm. want to play quarterback. None of them want to play cornerback, and none of them want to play linebacker because of the, you know they see in college, especially targeting rules, is called every game, and yeah. you're off and, the field. And I don't know if the public knows this, but when guys get a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct or whatever kind of um, personal foul, these are you get a FedEx letter. On Monday, you walk in your locker room, okay, so you play a Sunday game, you walk in the locker room on Monday, in your locker, there will be a, there's a FedEx letter, okay, and you open up that FedEx letter, and it has this, it's a letter from the league stating what you did, that was whatever offense you had, and how much money they are going to take out your check. And those checks, when they start talking about hitting penalties and things of that nature, you're talking about anywhere from fifteen to $30,000 out your check before you even get your check. They're taking that money out your pocket. So yeah. understand when people when people see these penalties, when people see these, I know, I know, heck, Josh, I, say it, or, I mean, uh, Heckma just got dizzy yeah. at what oh, Isaiah was well, saying. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen to thirty thousand. Yeah. Like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, so you I mean you take somebody? I mean, that's a lot of freaking money. Of course. So uh, as a defender, if I'm doing my job based upon the rules that you have set in stone, and you're still going to take money out of my pocket, what am I supposed to do? It makes things really tough. It sucks. Yeah. Look at you, player. man, defending the defense. I like You're it. You're an offensive guy. I, I, I like it. This is player. monumental. I like it. Football player. Hey, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Isaiah Stanback, football player. Former. 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 Quarterback. Former. <laughs> Quarterback. Make sure you put the former in there. Former receiver. I am not running away from men in tights anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Barry Church is running away from you. Yeah, exactly. Well, he, <laughs> he didn't even hear that. I think that was your got it. I think that was your Yeah, yeah now you're upset. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right, let's take our break. When we come back, we preview Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why SLR pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizol for freedom from glare. Three cutting-edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more. Do more. Essilor. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek. And we're both with... United, United Ag, Ag and Turf. Turf. The official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. <laughs> well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit UnitedAgandTurf.com. Back 
to Talking Cowboys. It's a great people, great pay replay here on Talking Cowboys. You've heard it already that Jason Witten has joined the Caliber Collision team. You can join him to do great work with great people for great pay and apply right now at jobs at caliber.com. That's jobs at caliber.com. Second segment here of Talking Cowboys. If you join Caliber Collision, you can get the bag. Just like Isaiah brought into the studio. <laughs> he, bought, he, he bought the whole bag. I wish we could show it on the he camera. He bought the whole it bag. The it's bag? the Santa bag. That's for sure. It's, this it's a, is insane. It's gigantic. This guy here. Look at this man. thing. It's he like you're going it. to a trip to Europe or something. It's filled man. with Look gifts for everyone. It's filled with cash. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Fresh don't don't, 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 don't come to the star. They're they on their way right now. <laughs> Where's Isaiah? <laughs> Cats will be waiting in the parking lot. Oh, yeah, you still got that bag? <laughs> <laughs> he drives a pink and Paula, guys. Exactly. Oh, final episode prior to Christmas. Thankful for every one of you guys. Yes. All of you in the studio, Chris Beam in the back, and then also thankful for all of Cowboys Nation. As Man, well. hey, can't say enough. It's no. been because of you guys. And would y'all please? Are just, we opening this just, song just now? Come, don't do please, this. please, oh, just yeah. just pull oh, the the first one oh, out. Which is oh, the is the gold one? Oh. Or the this this one. Thank yeah, you, Brad Sham. First of all, do you guys see the quality? Do you guys see the, the And I did it all wins? myself. I did it all <laughs> myself. <laughs> this, is, this is impressive. This is the heck one. I did it all myself. The double H special right here. I did it all myself. This is so oh, awesome. Oh, autographed? <laughs> autographed? It's an autographed photo of Heckma signing a contract. No. no. <laughs> Listen. That's awesome. Let me just say this. That's oh. awesome. I could not have achieved any of this without you guys. I have not worked a day doing this, guys. I'm straight up, you know? That's so. Awesome. I, it may seem like the most flex thing to do, <laughs> but it's not. I That's wanted awesome. you guys uh, to have that so that dope. you understand that I couldn't do it. With, and the cards are personalized. Yes, they are. Awesome. Oh, man. All right. The cards are personalized. But, <laughs> hey, man. You got, you got, you got Thank you, sir. Autograph. <laughs> Appreciate it. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I will not make it out the building with this still in this wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, That's no, awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thanks, that? Jet. Appreciate it, bro. So, oh, good. Thank in, you, in our bags, for those of you who can't watch the show, Heckma has a signed photo in a, a very personalized frame. Ya homie, heck yeah. my hair. You got a very nice signature, my friend. Thank you. This is going on my desk awesome. upstairs. Oh, yeah. Mine too. Are you That's kidding me? Awesome. That's going to meet someone. They're going to meet someone. That's going to be on my desk right here. <laughs> <laughs> Chris got already got his. That's okay. Awesome. We've got about 25 minutes left, and we've got okay. to do our pickums yep. later on. We so do. Let's we do. talk some Cowboys. We talked about the Pro Bowl in the first segment. We didn't get to hit news and notes as the Cowboys were back on the practice field for a limited time yesterday, remaining virtual throughout the week. But, Rob, any updates? Well, yeah, they, they were in a walkthrough mode again. Didn't have helmets on. Super light practice. <laughs> awesome, heck. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Tyron Smith did not practice. Tony Pollard and uh, Demarcus Lawrence did not practice as well. They were focusing on working with Britt. Yep. So I think they're it, <laughs> oh, that's work. Instead of walkthrough, just kind of maintenance day, and then mm. get ready for Sunday, and then they're back to the Cowboys are back to a normal practice today. Is that a positive sign, or is that something to kind of read more in between the lines with with both of them? On the bands, I wouldn't say it's like positive, but I think it's 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 nothing to. I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. Okay, uh, nothing they, to be alerted about. No, they did this with Tony last week, um, and and Tank was limited at one point late in the week uh, with the foot, so they're just being careful with those guys. I think. Yep. Do you think if that's something that can linger on the foot for for D Law Isaiah? Yeah, I'm not sure what he's experiencing, but I've had a major foot injury in the past, and there's so many ligaments and tendons. That, it's that fragile. It's just, yeah, there's a yeah. lot going on with that part of your body. So I would imagine that they're going to do everything they can to, to ease up on the pressure, especially when you're 270 pounds. It obviously didn't affect him in the game, thank goodness. Yeah. But the fact that he's had it at least the last yeah. two weeks is something I think maybe you could mm. keep an eye on moving forward. And th this is at the point of the season where everybody's banked up. Everybody. It's that football cliche where everybody's hurt. Everybody's <laughs> dealing with something. And you have an additional game. And you've got another game to work at. That's true. <laughs> we, we mentioned that, I believe, last week, that yeah. it usually would be the penultimate game where we're still three games away yeah. from the end of this regular season. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a playoff game coming up on the other side of that, too. So. Any, any news? Uh, Tyron Smith, um, you know, Mike said he's getting better. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, we'll see what happens today. I think 
if, if they don't feel like he's ready this week, then they'll sit him this week. I mean, I think, look, the Kansas City game was a very important game, and they said, ah, he's not ready yet. So I think that's what that's what they'll do. You know, I think the one thing that's really been – I think they they faced a Philbin and Mike McCarthy has faced a lot of criticism about the swing tackles and the way that they've approached it, approaching it uh, because no one's ever it's so unconventional to have guys to split snaps uh, and I think the football purists hate it. Um, obviously, they are finding something that's working because they're getting these guys reps and going into a game like this. Obviously, where you know your opponent, how do you feel at the left tackle position? Whether they go with an Inseki or still, yeah, and it's also. I feel like he might be catching a little more flack because of what he said all of 2020, right? I mean, all of 2020, the the, the here we go. Continuity was the word that you talked about on the offensive line. Well, that wasn't the case. You didn't. This isn't the case right now. Why so much of a change in the thought process in such a short amount of time? Is it just solely based off of personnel? Um, yeah. I, I th- he has said, look. Continuity is great in so many words. Continuity is great, but if you're not performing, then we have to look at other options. And that that's what they've done at left guard. That's what they've done at right tackle. You know, Lyle Collins has been in and out of the lineup. And yeah, I think with Terrence Steele, I think they're they it's pretty obvious they think he's more comfortable at right tackle than left. So mm-hmm. based on certain situations within the game. They decided to put Ty and Seki in there as well, and they're just I, they're still trying to find the right mix. Seems like based on this last game, they found the right mix at left guard, putting Connor Williams back in and letting McGovern be that fullback guy. What is your confidence level whenever you see seventy nine at the left tackle spot as opposed to anybody else? You know, I've always said I hadn't had a lot of confidence in Ty and Seki, uh, but he did a pretty good job. I mean, in, in run blocking and even and pass blocking. I don't know which one is his strong suit. Um, I, I think they will say pass blocking is he's a little bit better. That's uh, that's, yeah, that's why they mixed him in. Okay, yeah, yeah. and so. It, I just feel like right now uh, this team is headed in – they want to head into a long playoff run. And recognizing that injuries do happen, you're going to need all of these guys to get some quality reps, and they're doing it. I think it had been since we called the Liberty game, where we've seen a team full-on have a uh, offensive lineman by committee. This is something that's unconventional. You hadn't seen it. And so I think that's why it's just one of those things where he's catching flack about the continuity argument uh, and so forth. But if it's working, we're winning, and Dak's not getting hit because of it, hey, man, stay with it. Whatever works. As long as we can run for 100, throw for 300, they can have a line change like doggone hockey as far as I'm concerned. Let these and boys go out there change. and play. That's a line change. <laughs> yeah. um, let them go in there and play. Whatever the matchup is, because teams are going to try to load up that left side. That's the reality. Yeah. So whatever your intention is for that drive, put your best man out there. Yeah, and, and it is interesting, that line change. We were calling the North Texas and Liberty Flames game is what Heckman was alluding yeah. to. And they would take – all of their guards and all of their tackles, and they would rotate them after every two series. It would just go back and forth, it's back weird. and forth. And it, <laughs> I hated it. Wild. I mean, <laughs> I just it, as an offensive guy, you don't like thinking about the the changing, and it gives yeah. you bubble guts as a guy up front because it, there's so much difference in between each individual player. Yeah, but it's just like the the quarterbacks, right? It's no longer – you don't raise your eyebrow now when quarterbacks start interchanging. When you start seeing a quarterback come out the game and another quarterback comes in, you know, you got you know Hill out there yeah. and, and with the Saints – it they used they to each be, bring their own they each bring their own thing. skill set. And it used to be a big no-no, right? You remember back in the day, it was a no, huge no-no. Don't you take the quarterback out. He's going to lose his rhythm. Now it's like, oh, okay, well, it's situational ball. Who's to say that that's mm. not okay at the offensive line position? It's just what's been done for so long. Right. That's a great point. No, and, and look, just going de- diving into this game, I just feel as though your offensive line has got to put it on tape in the running game. Yeah. We, we've got to see this running game um, get better. Yeah. Well, you, you obviously versus the Washington foot the the Eagles versus the Washington football team, they ran the ball so effectively. Look, man, I, I'm I'm sure you're the same way. You don't believe that teams get up for one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just execution at yeah. this point. And I just feel as though, obviously, when we talk about the Pro Bowl votes and all that, I just feel like we have the guys up front that can get that done. you got to have some sort of established run game because you didn't against Washington two weeks ago. Nah. And then you saw what Philly did last week. Of course you've got to find a way yeah. to run the football Seriously. this week. 238 yards the Eagles had on Jesus. 41 carries Goodness. against Washington on Tuesday. I can't believe the game was only on Tuesday night. but And only 38 were from Jalen Hurts. So 200 yards from your running backs. 
And I do think Hurts is the RPOs and the threat of Jalen Hurts is a big factor in why they're able to run the ball with success. Yeah. Cowboys are a little different. I mean, Dax, that has not been a, a featured element of their offense this year. So can they, you know, can and, and maybe they're saving it. You know, Dax kind of alluded to that. <laughs> right. But can they just line up and run the ball against Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen? Do you, be- be- do you believe they're saving that, or do Cowboys. you believe that it's out of there? Cowboys. Nate they're Newton running Nate. by. Nate. <laughs> not, if you hear that in the back of your headphones, that's Nate Newton, everybody. It is definitely ugly. Sweat a day. <laughs> Man, Nate is so big. Can you imagine that guy? I just can't even imagine. He's this, not even as big as he small. Yeah, that's right, small, that's Nate. small Nate. Yeah. Jesus, that's get out the way. <laughs> so, going back to, to what we were talking about, do you believe that they're saving Dax legs? Is that something that is a possibility? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think he he is. He's been a little more mobile these last couple games, and yeah, I think they're trying to keep it in the back of opponents' minds come playoff time. But I think overall, no, like that has not been coming off the injury and coming off the strain calf. I think obviously they've been more selective. He's been more selective, so I don't think he's going to be Jalen Hurts. You know, I don't <laughs> think sure. that switch is going to flip. That's suddenly going to be a huge part of their offense. I, I'd be surprised if they do that. Dak doesn't want to run. That's just that's just plain and simple. Dak is so hesitant to run right now. He's nervous, like Purvis. He just doesn't want to cross that line of scrimmage. He, there's plenty of opportunities that you see on film where he could easily cross the line of scrimmage, steal a quick five, six yard slide, and go back to the huddle. He doesn't want to. Hmm. He just doesn't want to. Now, if he has to, there's been a couple of plays where he's done it, but it's been along the sideline. <laughs> he's very, very close to the sideline where he can get them yards and run out of bounds. I think he's really hesitant right now, and I'm pretty sure that ankle has everything to do with why he's why he's second guessing that. Man, I agree. I just feel as though, you know, he he understands his value uh, to this team. And with the the little injuries that he's had so far, man, what's to say, especially with the cheap shots that guys are taking in the league, that something happens to him? Uh, Obviously, you can't play scared. You know, you can't play scared. Uh, But if you're saying that Hurts impact on the running game equated to the 238, then Damn, <laughs> you know we need we need some of that ourselves, and we have been needing some of that uh, over this last stretch where we've been talking about the offense slumping. I just feel as though, look, our offensive line has got to dominate the line of scrimmage. The running game is going to be what's going to get this passing game going. The drops have got to stop right now. <laughs> it's got to it's got to end. And here's a defense that you're coming against that obviously still measures up like those top tier defenses that you talk about that you're going to see once you get into the playoffs. So how we execute, I think is going to be very important. I want to go back to the drops and we've we've mentioned CD Lamb earlier in the week, but this hasn't been a problem just in no. one game. No. This has been a problem throughout the first two years of his career. Now, keep that in mind. It's the first two years of his career. He's had such an impact on this offense already oh, man. that a lot of people expect him to be an all-pro caliber receiver as a, a second year as a rookie. Even last year, he was expected to, to pull that load. Mm-hmm. Is there any worry moving forward about the drops surrounding C.D. Lamb, or is this just something that he's growing into early in his NFL career? It's something he just has to correct. You know, I mean, there, nobody's going to be harder on him than himself when it comes to that. He's a, he's a, I mean, he's a, he's a professional, and you know, he's passionate about the game. He's passionate about being um, a, a threat and a weapon for his offense. So he, there's nothing about him dropping a ball that he likes or or allows. It's just something that he has to sure up. He has to focus in on some of those plays. And if he does in a sense make up for those plays, obviously, um, with his with his other other plays that come his way, but. Those plays, and he knows this, those plays will kill you when you need it most. So he has to try to find a way to focus in and separate the the route, the catch, and the, the yak yardage. You have to right. separate those things. And so often, you know, the route runs right into the catch slash I'm looking at, at what I'm about to do with the, with the ball before I even get it. <laughs> yeah. And that is, you know, it's like the old Miles Austin, my old team of Miles. Miles used to, used to do the same thing. He used to pop on the ball all the time. He, he ran a great route, get open, and he would just drop it because he was already looking at the next move he was going to make. It's the same thing with CD. He just has to separate those elements. Got yeah. to catch it first. Yep. Yeah, and the, the one in particular that reminds me of that, they missed on, that would have been a 20-plus yard gain. And I think those plays are even more important the mm-hmm. way defenses are playing you right now. The chunk plays, yeah. The chunk plays are, are very, they're at a premium right now, the way that they're uh, put, like Dax has put a cap on things down the field. So you got to cash in when they can. Again, in the Wash, That was the Giants game. In the Washington game, they had only a couple of those opportunities, and one was a holding penalty that mm-hmm. drew it back, and I think one that drew a P.I., um, 
but so you have to be able to cash in if defense is going to play you that way and limit those opportunities. You know, when I see that number 88, boy, I just think about the connection that Troy and Mike had, you know, that those old Nike commercials, the ESP, that these guys, they thought on the same wavelength. It was just the way that they did it. And you just, when you needed a play to be made, you knew number 88 could make it. You know, that's the yeah. same way that Cowboy Nation wants to depend on uh, CD. I just don't want that stigma placed on him and it's starting to you're starting to hear those whispers about the drops just like the, the kid that came in from from LSU that from for, for Cincinnati yeah, oh, he, Jamar can't, Chase. he can't catch a ball he can't catch a straight ball and then he, he's blazing everybody right now so Destroying people. yeah can't can't have that and I'm sure like you said CD's harder on himself than anybody else could ever be there are even some whispers around Jamar Chase right now because he hasn't been the same over the last four or five weeks but that's the thing is these these receivers come in so overhyped and so hyped up and part of that is because of the draft classes that have been a part of the That's true. college football the last couple of yeah. years. Yeah. There have been some really, really good rookie wide receiver classes over the last two, three seasons, yeah. and CeeDee Lamb's right up there. When his name is mentioned, that's who you think about. It's the Jamar Chases, the Justin Jeffersons, yep. and the Jerry Judys, and if they don't produce, then it's a problem. What exactly? I mean, for from in my opinion, what we need from CD is the yards after catch. I, it, that's what he does better than anybody. And, and they're starting to uh, they're starting to understand that because they're getting the ball in his hands a lot quicker now, right? Yeah. So we start as we start talking about the KC offense and how they get their playmakers the ball near the line of scrimmage. They're starting to do that with CD. Over the past two or three weeks, we're starting to see those quick screen passes to CD, and he's getting that yak yardage, and he's getting that momentum going. Um, it's, but it, you know, to Rob's point, those bigger chunk plays when they should present themselves, you gotta gotta you know collab on those. And he has advantage. had a, and he has had a productive year. I think he's, Very good. he's leading in catches, seventy catches with three games to go. Uh, I think he's tied with Amari for six touchdowns. So he's been productive, but he could be more productive. And again, like, like playoff time. You can't miss those opportunities against the really good teams. You get away with it against yeah. the Giants. And people, people have to also understand how how the 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 percentage of the what, what, what am I trying to say the 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 room for a margin for error. There's zero margin for error at the receiver position. No, if somebody has eight drops in a year, that's a lot. That's a lot. Out of all the balls he gets, he might catch 50 balls this year, 60 balls this year. If he has eight drops, that's a lot. What's the margin of error on that, right? So one drop a game is a bad day for a receiver. Yeah. So people have to understand that, too, how difficult this is and how everybody's expecting the, everybody out there that runs routes to be so perfect when the ball comes their way. You're expecting Dak to throw a perfect ball. You're expecting the receiver to receive the ball, tuck it away as he's getting hit, not drop it at all. The margin of error is just not there. And it's just the same thing for kickers. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a short lease on kickers. Kickers got to be perfect. You know, obviously you miss two extra points in a game. That's that's a lot. Offensive linemen. You could have 60 Jeez. snaps. It's kind of the Connor Williams yeah. thing. You could have 60 snaps, play pretty good. Two yeah. could go really poorly against Aaron Donald, and Terrible that's game. all anybody's talking Terrible about. Terrible game. Yeah. Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Throw him away. <laughs> Get him out of here. He said it yesterday. He he owned up to it. He said, I can't have those drops. He's, he owned up and said, no excuses. I can't blame the visor. I can't blame the sun. Can't blame the wind. Nothing. I have to catch those footballs. And you like to hear that from, from C.D. Lamb. All right. When we come back, all three of you guys are going to be mad at me because we're doing our pick and I went 5-1 and one again next week. When we come back, oh, you're on tech, Talking Cowboys. Congrats. Bro, what the coach used to say, catch a dark spot. <laughs> Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. At AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. The Cowboys way. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. 
Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to Talkin' Cowboys. Whether you're watching from home or you're cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting oh, play. Oh, book an yeah. appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor oh. can do for you. <laughs> see more, do more Essilor on Talking Cowboys. Oh, we got the triple exclamation point in there. I can't take it. That boy, that boy did it. He's so playing the, with his food. The facial expression, though, before him. <laughs> that was very Here Mr. Go. That was very Mr. Bean ish. I like that. It I was like Mr. Bean ish. <laughs> That's not a good thing. No. Can someone online Ooh. clip that and send it to oh, me? Oh, it's got to happen. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody please gif that and throw it on, throw it on online. Please, thank you. All right, standings update. Mm. Isaiah didn't have a great week. I did not. Two well, and, he went two and four. So he's at 44 and 43 overall. The fans, yeah, Rob yeah, and yeah. Hackma, all went three and three. So an even 500, 500 for all three of them. Heckma, Heckma rem remains in second place. Rob is in third. The fans are in fourth. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at the top. I went 5-1 and one last week. I'm the only one that picked the Patriots. <laughs> or, I mean, excuse me, the Colts. And I'm the only one that picked the Texans. So that was how we differed last week. Because we were the same on a lot of our picks last week. Yeah. How did your lady do? Two weeks ago, she went 2-4. and four. Was that two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Jesus, yeah. weeks are last week was Mike in Iowa. He went three and three. That's right, Mike in Iowa. That's yeah. Right, so, right. but this week we've got Jeff from Mansfield. Jeff, how's it going? You're on Talking Cowboys. Mike Mansfield. Good morning. How are you guys doing? I Good hear day. you are a close friend of Mr. Beam in the back. Uh, yeah. Back in the heyday, we used to get in some trouble. Oh. Uh, and in the local towns. We are going to call you back at some point and just have <laughs> no, you tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Beam's like, please do not let that happen. All right, Jeff, we're going to have six games to pick here of the Week 16 action around the NFL. And we're going to start with you with the San Francisco 49ers and the Tennessee Titans, the Two of these teams that are, of course, in the hunt for the playoff berths. And Tennessee, 13 ga giveaways since week 11. <laughs> Most in the NFL. <laughs> Isaiah, I already got a picture of, of Rob. All right, it. San Francisco <laughs> at Tennessee. Who you got? Well, being a hated 49ers person, I uh, always got to go against them. So I'm going to go with the Titans. Mm. Got the Titans. Rob, who you got? Pick him with his heart. Uh, 49ers are kind of rolling right now. I'll take San Francisco. I'm going to take San Fran as well. Who you got? Man, we want to fatten them up because everybody is hyping them up so much. So I'm going 49ers right mm. now. West Coast, baby. West Coast. Goes against me. So, yeah, everybody's against Jeff on that one. Hey, that's a chance for you to gain a game. So we, we yep. see that as an opportunity <laughs> on this show. All right. Uh, Colts at the Cardinals. Arizona's lost four of their last seven games after starting 7-0. and oh. The Colts are running all over everybody with Jonathan Taylor right now. Heckman, we'll start with you. I'm going to go with the Colts. I think their running game is hard to stop right now. So, mm -hmm. going Colts. Isaiah. Colts. Buda Baker. Buda Baker. I'm doing Indy here as well. <laughs> Cardinals. I think mm. it's a, it's shifted to where now they'll never win another game. I think they'll get back on track at home. That's a smart pick from Rob Phillips. Jeff. Well, he can't go against a Texas boy, Kyler Murray, so you got to go with the Cardinals. Okay, mm. I see what you're doing there. All right, Bills at the Patriots. We'll let Isaiah Oof. start with this one. Battle for first place in the AFC East. Winner comes out on top. Who you got? Bills Mafia. Ooh, you're at picking the Patriots? A, you're picking against Belichick at home? I feel good about the Bills Mafia. Mm, okay. Who you got, Heck? 
Wow, <laughs> you just that shocked she me. On the cake. That was, he, that was complete cake and pasty Pasties right there. Are out. Oh, <laughs> are out. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> he knows you show him. <laughs> I'm going Patriots at home. I got Patriots at home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get yeah, we so are. much we're trouble. Our show's over. Oh, that's, that's not okay. yeah. Derek's um, already well, texting me. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, Would not make the cow bite. <laughs> okay, so did you give a pick? You can pick the, bet, the said Bills. Bills. You yes. said who? I said Patriots. Okay, I'm going to go Bills here as well. Who no pasties, but Bills. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, who you got? I gotcha. So did I read last night that Beasley's out? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah he's, he's on the a, COVID. He's on the 10-day COVID list, yes. Yes, yes. So you got to go Patriots all the way. That's mm, a good point, Jeff. Smart man. Beasley, Damn it. Man. Would yep. you like to switch it? No, I mean, it's locked in. Okay. Right? That's, that's the Well, we're still on the show. We're, we're still, still on the pick. Don't this call us later. Shot. Don't, don't call us later. One chance to switch do it. it. Do it. Fine. Don't. Pats. Woo! Oh, we flipped it. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. At least <laughs> we did it on air. Needed it. <laughs> All right. A battle of number one and number two overall picks. The Jacksonville Jaguars oh, visit God. the New York Why did Jets. They do that? The, you got to get the flushing noise, uh, Chris. We got to hear the flushing. Oh, sh- yeah, because that is horrible. I don't uh, have a flushing noise, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to say the Jets get the job done with Zach Wilson and company. Who you got? I'm going with the Jags because half the Jets team is on COVID. Are they? Okay, I'm going to flip it because I didn't know that. I'm going to go Jaguars here. Thank <laughs> no, you no, get out of the quit. <laughs> they got, Thank what, you, 17 Isaiah. players right now, something like that? Do they really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thanks, Isaiah. Jags. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I want Jags. Information <laughs> to my chest. <laughs> Jeff? Damn it. Uh, since you all went Jags, uh, I'm going to root for my boy Trevor Lawrence, but I will switch to the Jets just to make up some ground for the for the uh, the pickers. I, I Let's you, go for you. the fans. I love it. This guy. Yes. All right. Zag. He's like the it. zig and the zag. All right. <laughs> Miami sure. at New Orleans. Both teams 7-7, seven and seven, except Miami's won six straight after starting the season 1-7. and seven. Heckma, we'll start with you. Man, Miami Dolphins' defense is coming with it, mm-hmm. and uh, – at the Saints, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the Dolphins. Okay, to and Tungo Bailoa is one of the most accurate passers in the NFL right now. I'm gonna pick the Dolphins on the road. Flippers, Flippers. Oh, Saints defense. Oh, shut it down. Cam Jordan. Rob has yeah, two Saints. games that as soon as he's picked it, I'm like, man, that's probably a smart thing to do. Well, Jeff, flip it. No, I'm Zach. not gonna flip it. Okay, <laughs> I'm going with the Saints. I think uh, yeah. is Hill still at quarterback? Yes. Yeah. Oh, the man is is unbelievable. He can do anything. I think he can sell popcorn and stands and play a football game. Wow. He probably could do that, actually. But all right. All right, let's go into the final game of the week, the one everybody's been looking forward to. The Cowboys with an opportunity to shore up the NFC East. They are 4 and 0 versus the division, the Washington football team coming on a short week. Cowboys at 10 and 4, the football team at 6 and 8, and Jeff, we start with you. Yeah, so I, I think we should throw a little extra uh, on this game and, and predict how many picks that Diggs gets as well. Ooh. Going to the Cowboys, but I'm going to go with uh, one interception from Diggs and two turnovers by the defense. Okay, there you go. I like that. Let's pick I the, like pick the takeaways. That's fun. Uh, Jeff, well, give us a score real quickly before we let you go. Ooh. Let's say uh, 27-10. Awesome. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for being our guest this week. We appreciate you keeping Chris Beam in line for all these years and allowing him <laughs> to still opposite. be employed by the Cowboys. Yeah, I was reverse. He, he kept me uh, <laughs> out of the principal's office quite a bit. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so all much, right. Jeff. Thanks, Have Jeff. a good one. Bye. There he goes. Jeff from Mansfield picking for the fans this week. Okay, so now <laughs> not only do we have to give a score, but we have to give our t- takeaway predictions. Okay, yeah, I think the, I, I think the offense – Beats the defense, the takeaways versus touchdowns mm. thing. I think the mm. offense sort of gets back on track here. 31 17 Cowboys, and they clinch. I, I bet they clinch before the kickoff. Ooh. I bet they clinch before kickoff. There's they only need a couple that. of wins from other teams to do it, but they'll clinch anyway. Okay. 37 17. Dim boys. Dim boys. Two your mind's not telling you no this time, huh? Two who's your take? Your mind's not telling you no two, now, huh? Two ta- he's a, who's my <laughs> Two takeaways? Two takeaways. Yeah, I like four to two. Offense wins. But two takeaways on defense. Three Four touchdowns. touchdowns two three takeaways. Okay. Okay. You know, obviously, I'm going uh, Cowboys uh, this game. But Micah Parsons 
you got to get a takeaway. Mm. Of all the things that you've done so far this year, getting a takeaway is not one of them. Mm. So I'm saying Micah gets his interception this game. And just so we can outline how the Cowboys could clinch prior to kickoff, Philadelphia could either lose or tie against the New York Giants. That's probably the lesser likely of the two. Then the other one is you need two wins from out of these six teams. Las Vegas, Jacksonville, Los Angeles, Chargers, New England, Minnesota, and Atlanta. So you need two of those teams to win, which is actually a pretty good possibility. And then you're, you've clinched prior to you even playing on Sunday night. So there is a chance that by the time kickoff happens, the Cowboys are already NFC East Division champs. But I'm going to say it doesn't matter because the Cowboys are going to get a win 40-14 to 14, both sides of the football in a dominant fashion. Ooh. I'm going to go to Whataburger this week. It's going to be phenomenal, and the defense is going to have three takeaways. Three? Right. Can we put this on the fly real quick? Yes. Yeah. Sure. All right. So the Cowboys have, I believe, uh, Rob, make sure I'm right on this. Is it 17 different players with a touchdown? That, sound, uh, that sounds right. I think it's They 17. need one more different player to, to t- get a touchdown to break the uh, Cowboys record. Okay. Everybody pick one. Who's going to be the one? Who's going to be your – who's your guy? Okay. And you can't pick someone else's. It has to be somebody new. <clears throat> yeah, new. Yeah, so, like, sure. for instance, it could be Micah Parsons. If he scores yeah. a touchdown, you win. Heck, if you want to pick him. <sighs> I'm. You know what? I'm going for the big man this week. Connor McGovern. I think, <laughs> Connor, I think this is – because it's going to be a 40-burger. I think it's going to be a 40-burger, and I believe that Kellen Moore takes the cap off of the Connor right, so McGovern, McGovern playbook. Yep. Okay. Touchdown. You're talking about – who who is going to have who is not, the next touchdown? Who has not scored yet this year? Say a name, uh, and if they scored, I'll tell you. Ooh, Ooh, okay, that's a good one. Scored, yeah. I'll go with the bazooka pick six. Why not? Mm, I'm going to go really boring. I'm going to say Jeremy Sprinkle gets it as a tight end in the red zone. I think Jeremy Sprinkle gets in the end zone. So, I, can I go with one? Yeah, let's go. Well, I'm going to go Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman? Like the uh, former oh, Baylor no, no, wide no, no, receiver? I uh, know. Corey. Uh, what, no, Clement. 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 <laughs> Corey, Corey, uh, wait, we picked up Corey I'm going, Coleman? I'm going down a, down a roster like. <laughs> I'm like, Corey, Corey. I, I, CC, I'm sorry. Hey, you know. you're a Baylor fan. He was Corey a Baylor Clement. legend. He it's way Clement. deep in the bag. You know, you know, I, I had the Rolodex. The old school Rolodex was in my head. That's my I'm not studying at all. I have no idea who that dude is. Corey Clement. I love it. Well, Chris, I love that idea. Well, Merry Christmas, Chris. Merry Merry Christmas, everybody in here. Yeah, yes. I hope you all have a very safe and fun yes. holiday, and then we get a Cowboys dub, and we get to talk about it on Monday. Hope everybody out there has a Merry Christmas as well. Thank you so much for your support of Talking Cowboys and Cowboys Nation here over this 2021 season. Stay safe, and we will see you on Monday. For Chris Beam, Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback, I'm Kyle Yeomans, Heckma Harrison. What do we say on Friday? We always say Merry Christmas, and Cowboy Nation, I hope your team wins! This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!